Welcome to Confession Talk Podcast, episode 108. I'm with Seb and Bianchi. Um, and as always, please go subscribe, rate, and review this podcast and Brainiac Podcast, which is Stefan's host to that. So uh, on iTunes, SoundCloud, YouTube, Google, Spotify, Amazon Music, Stitcher, wherever you hear podcasts. So, and uh, please support me, Concussion Talk, on Patreon. So, patreon.com slash concussion talk. Concussion talk. Excuse me, I said that right. Um, and, uh, and also follow me on Good Pods, so, which is the podcast the app. So, search your app store for Good Pods HQ or Good Pods. And, uh, and then before that, for if Devin and I talk, I will. Introduce my sponsor, Headcheck Health. Concussion Talk Podcast is presented by Headcheck Health. Headcheck Health bridges the gaps in concussion care through simple, powerful technology. To run organizations like the Canadian Football League, Track Factory Racing, the Canadian Junior Hockey League, Eastern Washington University, and Volleyball Canada, who rely on Headcheck Health to improve communication and optimize care. Visit headcheckhealth.com for more. Okay, so Stefan, uh, thank you so much. And as I uh, mentioned very briefly, but you are the host, the new, the new host, season two host, and even more. But season two of these hosts, uh, replacing Edina, you can't replace Edina. Filling in the meeting is dead because she has graduated. Um, but Stefan is a master, master student at UFT, and he's co host, the host, the host, the host of Brainiac Podcast. With uh, the University of Toronto Concussion Lakes Foundation chapter, Foundation chapter, and I will actually get him to explain it better because I'm still not my words now. So, Stephen, uh, you're, you're thanks for thanks for hosting. And thanks for being here, and uh, just introduce yourself and say like, what you're doing at U of T, and and just more about the podcast for especially for season two. Sure. Yeah. So, th- thanks for having me on, Nick. I'm really excited to be here. Um, so in terms of the of what I'm doing, I'll start with kind of a little bit about myself. So I'm a second year master's student um, at U of T in the Faculty of Kinesiology and Physical Education. I'm doing my research under Dr. Michael Hutchison. And what it's looking at, um, for the most part, is risk of future injury after concussion. So there's a lot of research out there that suggests that, you know, after people get concussions and they're recovered, there's, you know, actually a, a greater risk of injury when they come back to sport compared to athletes who haven't been concussed. So I'm kind of working mm-hmm. on that and, you know, taking a little bit of a spin on it, focusing um, on sex differences as well to see, you know, are females or male athletes more susceptible to this risk of injury. So that's kind of the approach that I'm taking. Um, that's a bit about me and what I'm doing for school. But in terms of the, the podcast, um, like I said, I'm the host of the Brainiac podcast, and that's kind of done out of the U of T chapter of the Concussion Legacy Foundation. Um, and I've been a part of the, um, the club, I guess, for, for a couple of years as like a regular member um, prior to this. But, you know, Eddie put a po- Adina put a post out talking, asking for, you know, a podcast host. And I, I listen to podcasts a lot, like for, for a number of years. And I always kind of thought, hey, like it would kind of be cool to do that one day. So kind of put my name in the, uh, in the hat there. And I was fortunate enough to, to be selected. And, and it's been a great experience so far. Nice. Um, you did. You've done a great job. So, uh, what, what, what do you, what did you do for undergrad? Do you kinesiology, kinesiology in undergrad as well? Yeah, I did kinesiology at U of T as well. So it was just sort of a natural progression for me to to do my master's in that faculty, work, working with the same professor. Do you, have, do you have plans to carry on, do a PhD or anything, or just don't know? Um, yet? Yeah, I'm still, I'm still thinking. Um, yeah, you know, I've only got a little bit of time to figure it out because I'm hoping to be graduating within the next, you know, half year or so. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not hundred percent sure I'm trying to yeah. keep my options open, but we'll see. So what do we have planned for anything special planned for season two of Brainiac podcast? Any guests that we should know about or talk about? Um, you know, nothing's, nothing's shored up yet. So I don't want to like, you know, say something yeah. and have it not, yeah. not like follow through with it. Um, but really the approach that we want to take this year is more of, you know, more of an educational approach, so to speak. So, you know, season one of Brainiac was a lot about storytelling and, you know, interviewing different people 
that had different experiences with concussions and talking about sort of their personal experiences, which don't get me wrong, is extremely, extremely important. Um, we just wanted to kind of, uh, you know, take a different approach for season two. I talked with like the president who's there now and we kind of decided that it would be cool to take more of an educational approach and just talk to people with, you know, a range of expertise and experiences. So for example, um, in our first episode, we had Dr. Ann Hunt, who's an occupational therapist. So we talked about, you know, the role that OT is playing concussion. You know, the episode that came out just last week, we talked to the uh, volleyball coach at U of T, which was, you know, one of the best discussions I've, I've had in a long time. Just kind of gaining the coach's perspective is, you know, pretty unique because it's not something that's often talked and about. She's but been they, a coach for a long time. She? A long time. Yeah. So she's seen how concussion has changed from something that really nobody cared about in the 80s and 90s to something now that you know there's a big emphasis on so it was cool to just get her perspective on it um in the future you know i'm hoping to have some more medical professionals on healthcare professionals to gain their perspectives and you know i'll just sort of try and recruit a different perspective every month and so right. hopefully we can sort of just listen from listen to different people with just cool backgrounds and maybe different backgrounds to look at yeah. concussion from different areas yeah. definitely it sounds like a good idea uh, and people don't know Toronto as well as people in Canada do, but Toronto and UT has a good, well, a good and amazing plethora of people who can talk about concussions or any sure. real health issues. The University Health Network, which is associated with UT, am I right? Or is it just university yeah. is university also just the avenue it's on? But, but exactly. Yeah. But yeah, you have a lot, you have a lot of people, a lot of. Uh, different departments and, and hospitals you can reach out to. So definitely get some good information there. For sure. Um, so did you did you play? I know because you know, the question of examination is mostly, I know you talked to schools. That's what you were saying last year. Just, you know, you, you don't be on anymore, but the, the, a group of people, students are out front talking to schools. You know, like high schools, you know, junior highs, elementary schools, elementary schools, you should say mostly. Um, or it's very I know it does be called in here. You buy it, you call them center from in anyway, in area. But, um, yeah, uh, so and that's mostly concerned on the sports aspect of it. So, did you play sports when you were now or in high school or you know, yeah? So, year? so growing up, I played hockey and soccer, those were kind of my two favorite sports growing up. I played them you know, competitively until the end of high school. Um, and then I stopped. I didn't play hockey anymore, but I, I refed hockey. And then um, I still play soccer recreationally once a week. So just to stay active and just to stay, you know, connected to the sports is a big part of my life. But I don't really play mu- as much anymore. But I used to. Yeah. Did you ever, did you ever uh, bike? Like bike all because your name's like Donkey. It's like Van Pop. Yeah, it's a <laughs> well-known, well-known bike. Yeah, no, I uh, I didn't. I haven't gotten into cycling much. I know I have a couple of friends who who cycle and they, and they love it. So maybe it's something I got to get into. I mean, I have the last name for it, right? So. It's a bird of last name for you. And I guess it's, it's obviously, it's Italian, obviously. So, or I would say, yeah. obviously, but, you know, so soccer is obviously a big passion of yours. And uh, most yeah. of the hockey, obviously, because you're, you know, Toronto is just like. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. So, yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, so who's your, I know Adina, Adina was president, president last year of Think yeah. right? Yeah, she was a president last year. Uh, this year, it's a, um, I believe she's in fourth year now. Her name's Shreya, or Shreya, I think. Oh, Romana. yeah. That was like and, her name also. I was sure she was at the Yeah, end. and she's, uh, yeah, she's been great. She's been really um, good in terms of, like, supporting my ideas for the podcast and just kind of, you know, you know, giving her, you know, two cents on things and we've kind of collaborated together a lot and it's been, it's been great. I'm nothing but Great things to say about her. And you were and you were playing soccer and hockey, soccer and hockey. Uh, you have you must have more experience with concussions. I mean, not personally, but aside from your your, your yeah, academic work as well. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I I'm very fortunate to not have you know ever suffered a concussion. So that's something that I'm very you know very grateful for because I know how you know you know, damaging they can be in a sense. Um, but I have, you know, definitely been around some of my friends or some of my teammates that have suffered concussions. So I kind of have that perspective on them and just seeing how much they can, you know, do to somebody. You know, for example, when I was playing soccer, 
probably towards the end of when I, you know, towards when I stopped and maybe in grade 10 or 11, you know, my goalie took like a ball, maybe from five yards away, square to the face. Oh. Like, yeah, he didn't, he didn't get knocked out, but he got back up and yeah. didn't seem right. He, so, you know, coach took him off. And then when I was sitting on the bench with him, he was like asking me what his name was. Like he didn't even know yeah. his own name. So I was like, I was kind of like, maybe like the first one I was like kind of old enough to kind of start to understand like, okay, yeah, this is a, this is a pretty serious thing. So it's. Uh, uh, so, so you're, when you, you're, you study, in this study you know, for your, in your lab, do you, do you interview people or do you just, you just you look at statistic results or do you examine actual athletes? Um, so our, our lab's actually pretty diverse in terms of what we do. So there's some studies that look at more, biological so like sampling blood and yeah. sampling yeah saliva and looking how like that varies with you know exercise versus no exercise like in terms of a randomized control trial so there's like that biological aspect yeah and then there's also a pretty big emphasis now on our in our lab with um sort of more practical things so like developing protocols and right. you know developing return to you know return to play like activity protocols to suit different symptom clusters and and whatnot so that's kind of been a big focus of our lab because um our supervisor like the head the professor who runs the lab dr hutchison um develops has actually developed his own app for recovery um that's launched pretty recently um so like a a lot lot that goes into that is developing exercise plans better understanding exercise and how it relates to concussion so that, that that what i would say is sort of the main focus of our lab but like i said we have you know a pretty diverse range of projects going on on top of that so is, have you found anything in your in your research stuff this so far that indicates anything different do you think or not and i'm thinking about your results or speak before you finish yeah. researching but i mean like, if you have you noticed any during the course of your research have you noticed anything that you were surprised by um well my, my thesis is you know still underway i haven't yeah. gotten to the analysis part so i you know, can't give you an answer to my research oh, question. Man. Or should you, yeah. Yeah, but but what I did in my undergrad research, which was, you know, pretty interesting, is I looked at something called, like, delayed symptom onset. So, you know, as the name suggests, when you get hit in the head or you, you, you know, experience a concussive event, the symptoms don't always onset, like, right away. You don't always feel them immediately. Sometimes they take 15, 20, an hour, even a day later. And I sort of looked at that. And it was interesting to see that. It was like, I think you know, safe to say that, you know, it's, it's higher than almost 25% or around 25% of cases where that, that happens, where, you know, the athlete won't feel the symptoms right away. And so oftentimes they'll probably keep playing. And, you know, yeah. as we know, it's pretty dangerous to, yeah. to be doing that. So it sort of just kind of shed some light on the idea that, you know, mechanism of injury and looking what happened, like as a coach or as a, you know, um, athletic therapist on the sidelines or something if you see something that you think is a concussion um it's you know the 25 percent chance that they might not be experiencing symptoms even though they had a concussion and so just you know sort of being cautious when it comes to letting the player return to play you know that same day or even the next day right because sometimes it takes a little bit longer yeah. so that was sort of the interesting thing that i learned i didn't you know i had didn't expect to see a number that high going into it but again it's good to it's good to to kind of understand um, the symptom onset profile right. from that perspective. Yeah. So, and uh, not to put any spot on anything here now, but uh, from Dr. Hunt and and Christine, uh, mm-hmm. coach, 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 yeah. coach, 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 you know, I kind of, you know, having done a little bit of kind of my own research before talking to um, Christine, I kind of had a under- bit of an understanding of how you know, important coaches actually are when it comes to, you know, setting a sort of standard and culture when it comes to concussion, but just sort of hearing her perspective on it and hearing her perspective on how actually important the leaders on the team are. So like the, se- the veterans for, you know, for lack of a better word, are the people who are viewed as a leadership core of the team, how important they actually are and sort of spreading that message throughout the team. I thought was pretty interesting because, you know, only so much a coach can do sometimes. Sometimes it just doesn't register as much as it should than when it comes from a player. And that's a point that 
that she made. You know, I often you hear a lot about like in sports, so the leadership is so important. Now, face this player, that player brings a lot off the yeah. ice. Yeah, that's usually you know said with regards to like play on the ice or on yeah. the field, but yeah. just it it kind of came up again in this context with just like setting a standard, having a culture that supports reporting of concussion and injury in general. The players on the team, the leaders are very important, and so when we you know when 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 different bodies go in to educate the teams or to have like workshops or even the coach says something about how important concussions are. It's almost more important if the players have, the players have to buy into that and the leaders on the team are really important for that process. And that was just sort of a really interesting point um, that yeah. she brought up. And I was really fascinated by that, to be honest. And uh, well, I guess, I guess finally, my, my well, finally, finally, I always say that, but it may not be finally, but for now, let's say, yeah. What is the age range of this of the athletes you're studying, you're studying and your research? Mm-hmm. So being being at U of T and my faculty is pretty closely um so it's like linked with the like David McIntosh Sport Medicine Clinic that's from U of T. So my um thesis and my other project as well that I mentioned are focusing only on university athletes. So anywhere mm-hmm. from I guess 18 to 25, give or take, and around there. And when you're I know you mentioned in the uh, when you're talking to, to Dr. Hunt, um, you did some research with her, you worked with her. That's right. Did you did you study any you know, do you have you guys at Holland Blurry, Blurry then? Yeah, so what I did at Holland Blurry was it was through actually um a school placement program. Um and I wasn't actually like doing research um, on participants or with participants. I was actually helping with a knowledge translation website oh. that they were putting together called like the youth um youth concussion awareness network i believe it's called you can um because we should so, say the humble view is a children's hospital in toronto children's rehabilitation yeah. hospital in toronto but sorry continue. yeah so yeah they do a lot of great work with the, the youth population but you know the point of that um website or web portal whatever they want to call it was to sort of facilitate knowledge translation in an understandable way about concussions like for you know high school or young athletes in general um so that was you know the point like like I said when it comes to like coaches talking to players like there's there's always like a bit of a separation between what the research says and how important the research findings are and getting that to the community so that sports organizations athletes coaches can understand it there's you know it's sometimes it's a long process and an inefficient process and sometimes the knowledge that is generated through research isn't, you know, quickly enough spread to the people who need to hear it kind of thing or who it would impact. Yeah. And so all in Blue Review and a lot of the people in that lab now who are also affiliated with U of T, that's a lot of their, their focus is a lot on sort of finding ways to get the knowledge to the people in an understandable um, and efficient way, which, of course, is really important. No, that's uh, that's great. Yeah, so actually, now now this is definitely my final question. <laughs> um, you always you seem to start your podcast with questions to we say break the ice. So uh, I'll ask the one you asked, and so if you had to have was it dinner dinner with anybody? Dead or dead yeah. or alive? Is it was it dead or alive or just alive? I I think I said dead or alive. Dead or alive? Like, yeah, anybody dead or alive? Which, okay. Who would you have and why? Who you have dinner with and why? Or, that's uh, a- and I, when I was preparing this question for Dr. Han, I was thinking like, who would I even bring it? I didn't actually have like a good answer. So it was good that she didn't ask me at the time, but now you're asking me. So I got to think. Exactly. Um, so I'm, sure. I'm, I'm going to steal from her, but this is one that I knew I was going to take before she mentioned you it. You can't pick the same one as her. Sorry? You can't pick the same person. I can't. Oh my gosh. Okay. <laughs> okay. But who okay. She, who, well, who did she say? Well, she said... Uh, Chris Hadfield, but I I could think of another one. I'll, I'll say four. I'll say four, just so I don't have. To, so it's not a cop out. So Chris Hadfield um, is a kind of like a, was a kind of a role model of mine. Like I, I read his yeah. his book a few years ago, and just like a lot of the things he says, you know, obviously like astronomy and astronaut <laughs> stuff is not really applicable to me, but just it's more about like the the yeah. lessons they learned in general that are really yeah. transferable to anything you do in life. So I took a lot from that book. So I'd want to learn more about him and just oh, talk the to him. Is something interesting. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah, right. But, uh, that's I right. think then, you know, seeing that sports are a pretty big part of my life, I'd probably, my favorite player growing up was, was Matt Sundin. So I'd probably want to get to know him and just have like, 
you know, just to chat, chat to him about yeah. what it was like to play in Toronto. And I was pretty young when he, when he was in his heyday here, I was like, you know, under 10 or so, like around that age. So okay. like that growing up, he was just like a, the, the best to me. Like, so yeah. I would love to just chat to him now. Um, so that's two. I got to keep thinking. Oh, I only asked you one, but if you're under four, then go for oh, it. Oh, you only asked for one. Okay. Well, Matt Sandin would be one. <laughs> Chris Hathaway I mean, would be you ask for four, yeah. It's easier or just for everyone. Okay. I'll, yeah. I'll round it out. I will round it out with three just because that's a good number. I'm trying to think now, but I would probably. This is tough because I just want to pick athletes because I'm a sports junkie, but I feel like that's pretty lame. So I got to think. Um, okay. Well, I'll, I'll just, I'll just pick him because I don't want to kill our time, but I, I would on, honestly, like, even though he's like only a year older than me, I'd probably want to take Austin Matthews along with me too. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I think it, that would be a good trio because Doc, yeah. uh, Chris, Chris Hadfield is a big Leafs fan too. So I feel like we all have something yeah. in common. We'd have some good conversation. So that's <laughs> the, those would be my three. Not okay. not super original, but uh, still better than nothing. So <laughs> great. So uh, thanks, and did you have any questions for for me or anything? Or anything or, or did, I don't know if you have heard or not, but uh, well, like when I was like reading on on your website yesterday, just like yeah. in preparation for today, I just like wanted to know like what drove you to start doing this, so speaking about concussions and brain injury. Uh, well, as you know, you know my, my own brain injury, I see mm-hmm. them do the, 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 the distal, the distal one, but uh, reason, but uh, there's another word for it, there's a better word for it, but anyway, but yeah, I hate that one. But uh, also, just as I, I like writing, like when I went to work in Ottawa, expert on like development in Canada, I started writing a lot, writing a lot, and mm-hmm. I like writing, and I started the blog because I wanted to write about a two way to talk about brain injury and stuff. And, Good way to get things out there, and I like writing and you know, I like writing more humorous ways, ways, but mm-hmm. um, which I see notions is not lately than it is up to as much. But um, I thought it was a good way to get it, and then good way to write to talk about my issues and what I was feeling about things, and there's no one else doing it. And, uh, that's um, that I really said, I don't really look that hard, honestly, honestly but uh, but yeah, but uh, and then I just podcast, I was. As you were saying, you used to say, I listened to podcasts for a long time and just, just thought, eh, I'll talk to others, talk to people, talk to people, and just write best stuff on my own. It's better to just chat. More, there's more reason for me to just uh, meet more people and talk to them than any real. Tell my speech is still a bit just slow and stuff and tough sometimes. So I think it's, it's better. Than, I find it better than just, you know, writing by myself and just. Like the conversing with people and find out more. Sure. Them. Yeah, for sure. That's yeah. That that that's interesting. I I was reading through like your your story online like again yesterday night. I, it was yeah. You know, pretty pretty damn inspiring. If I you know, at least, you know, if I can say that. So thanks. Yeah. All right. Great. Well, I guess uh, that's that kind of wraps up this. This uh was well, not really a brainiac and concussion talk. <laughs> A lab totally, but it's kind of like that. So uh, next, this podcast will be out on Tuesday, December seventh. For right, yes, that's right. And uh, then, and beyond, and uh, Brainiac will have another one. As I said, Bianca, Bianca, but I was like, that's your name, side Brainiac. But Brainiac will have a podcast out before before Christmas break, I guess, for the holiday season. And uh, I'll have one more out, another one out in uh, another concussion talk podcast out on December, December 14th. So uh, thank you all for listening and thank you, Stefan, so much. And uh, we'll definitely be hearing from you again for in the end of the year. So uh, thanks again. Thanks so much. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Nick. Appreciate it. Thanks. Music at the beginning of this podcast is by Ben Sound, www.bensound.com.